sum death up in three words. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing. There is no death as in the final curtain. It goes dark and we're left and that's the end of it. That would be all pointless. What would be the point of all this if that was it, if that was the case? <laughs> My name is Neil Burrows. I got a job that a lot of people may find fascinating, somewhat disturbing, but for me, it's basically a way of life. It's a job that's done from the heart. I do have to work alone, but in the sense of the word, I'm never alone. It is a strange experience because most of the time you're on autopilot, uh, it's just kind of embalming, but every now and then you can switch on back to Mr. Neil Burrows and you, you can think, oh, what am I doing? So actually see the person deceased, it's an empty shell, there's an emptiness. Sometimes people's expectations, they can be more than you can deliver. And that bit feels a little bit, a little bit lonely because, it's, because as an embalmer, I'm saying I can do that, no matter what they ask for. I'm saying I can do it. And by, I mean, people think of the furrows and mummies, and mummification and the dehydration of the deceased. Embalming, in modern sense, is a chemical injection of a formaldehyde, which is basically like a disinfectant. The reason for doing embalming is so the people that visit the body or the loved one, it will leave a better picture in their mind. And maybe if someone has, has gone through a long drawn illness, and hopefully when embalming has taken place and there's a more lifelike appearance, as other well asleep, it's more natural. It'll leave a better picture. It just helps them to think that because they look better towards the end, things are starting to become better because the suffering's finished and the pain is finished. But you have to remember embalming is done for the living rather than for the dead. It's not a requirement. It's very important on the healing, on the grieving side. They ask me what I do for a living, I tell them that I'm an embalmer. They seem a bit fascinated, as if it, there's some sort of gory side to it, some dark side to it. Um, or they'll say like, oh, that's sick, that. And then they'll come and ask you, what is it that you do? They want to know more and more details. I was in my, I was about 19, 20, when I decided I was going to be an embalmer. And I started telling people that I wanted to be an embalmer. And everyone was quite shocked and surprised, as if like, oh, you don't want to do that as though it was a terrible job. And uh, it, it did have a bit of an effect on me because I did actually question it. But I, but I knew in my heart I wanted to do it. And when people were asking me, why do you want to do that? It did seem a little bit, as though I was a bit of an outcast. I don't know if that was my impression of what they were thinking of me, or if that's what they were trying to tell me, but it did feel a bit odd. And I soon learned not to tell people but one thing I've learnt is don't let other people judge you as to what your abilities are. It's better to find out yourself. I never get lonely when I'm embalming. I'm aware it's not just me with the deceased at that time. There's something a little bit more than that. I connect to spirit every day from the moment I wake up even when I'm asleep. I suppose I first realised that I had psychic abilities it was when I was looking back on my life in school. Um, from when I was about, about eight, nine, ten years old, I always remember being able to see clairvoyantly and like knowing what people were talking about before they'd actually finished. And situations they hadn't even been in, I could recall them. But I didn't actually know it was psychic until, until later on in my life. It's just through memories of looking back, I actually realised when they started. I think it's always been there. And besides being sceptical about it, um, a lot of people who don't believe in it, then they, they, some people think that it's like a mental illness. There's actually cases of, of mediums actually, actually being took into care against their will. I know a couple and they've had to prove that they're not actually hearing voices and it is, it is telepathy communication. Yeah, when I first started being aware of spirit in my adult life, a few years ago now, um, there was a time when I did actually question, is this my mentality or is it actually happening? Although I did believe in spirit, 
at the speed the development took in my life, I was having experiences. And when you talk to other people that aren't having these experiences, it does sound a bit strange. Uh, so obviously, they had my mum. She was a bit worried about what I was getting into. The spirituality side of my life now makes me feel more normal than ever before. Where before, I was isolated a little bit in my own thoughts and in my own mind. Spirituality now and the mediumship, it's actually, it actually brings me out. I, I don't have any questions about my mentality now. None, none whatsoever. I trust 100%. I don't believe I know. And that's the difference. I don't speak to many people. So I spend my time with spirit. Take my dad, for instance. Uh, we didn't have the best relationship. He passed away when I was 20. Uh, thought I knew it all at that age. So I didn't really bond with him in a way I should have. But since then, we actually develop a, like a good, strong relationship now. He's always around me. He's always helping me. And we both know that we love each other very much. And we don't think we said that enough to each other when he was on the physical earth. But he knows now and I do feel him around me all the time and I know that he loves me too. So it's perfect. But it is perfect. I know you probably think perfect would be having him back here, but I don't think we'd have the same relationship if he was back here. I was actually asking this the other night. Is it something that everyone can do? Or is it something that we're chosen to do? No, I actually believe that I believe that you agreed to do it before you come here. But I believe that everyone is, is capable of being aware of spirit. It all depends how far you want to take it. Spirits aren't actually people. They don't have a voice box. They don't appear at the side of us and start to talk to us. It's more of a, an energy field. So see, it has a ball of energy. And within the ball of energy, it contains all the information. Spirit will direct you to certain information that they want to give. So they're giving me evidence of who the person is, like in relation to the person who's sitting for the message. Uh, basically, I'm gonna take my awareness now and I'm gonna have a look in the energy. And as Spirit, I'm gonna invite Spirit now to step forward and to join me in my energy. Yeah, spirits are always around. So I'm just going to open myself up. Be made aware of a female, an elderly female. I feel as though the person who this who this lady's with wouldn't actually know of that, that well, or they would have been quite small when she passed. I'm also being made aware of someone in the family that would restore cars. I'm asking, I'm asking this lady to give me a gift. I feel as though I'm looking at a Doctor Who board game as well, with circles on it to put on. She's giving me these toys as a memory and enthusiasm. And she wants you to remember the child within and take them big steps, take them big steps. If each one of us as mediums can just change a person's belief, just through giving evidence, and if one person can go away and just giving it a second thought, then that's the job done. I think the more you come towards the end of your life, you do start to feather your own nest. I think you're questioning your own mortality as you get older. I've got a medium friend of mine. When I pass, she's going to do the service at the crematorium. But firstly, I'm going to be embalmed with a strawberry yazoo to get a nice colour. And then at the crematorium, I'm going to make a link from Spirit and give, I give messages to people from the congregation through the medium. I understand that people say that's a bit, bit far-fetched. It's uh, brilliantly far-fetched. Brilliantly, really.